What's up, Pride Bam? In today's video, we're gonna actually explain how I go about peeking into this meet that I'm doing this weekend. We're gonna take you through my last three weeks of training and look at my heavy SPD day, what I do there, how much volume I reduce down, what kind of intensity and exertion I'm working at, and explain really the semantics behind my peaking style. Now, before we even dive into the video, there's actually an announcement I have to make really quick, and it's kind of a crappy one, and that's that we're not doing the meet this weekend, which I know really sucks, but we're still gonna do a mock meet at Boss Barbell. We're gonna have Joe screaming at me in the background. We're gonna have a ton of hype. I'll even wear the damn singlet. We're gonna test our maxes and film it for you guys, and that's actually why we're not doing the meet. Apparently, even though I asked about this ahead of time, I can't film, I couldn't bring my videographer, my photographer, we couldn't even bring spectators. The whole gym's gonna basically be empty, which kills the whole purpose of doing a meet, in my opinion. So we decided not to do it. So there's always gonna be another time for me to throw up over 1,800 in a meet, and I know I'll do that, no problem, and throw up even more someday. So instead, we're gonna test uh, Max's in the gym, and we're gonna film it for you guys so you guys can follow along with us. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is actually take you through the last three weeks of training specifically on my heavy SPD day, which always falls on the Saturday to kind of mimic meet day, uh, since meet days are always on Saturdays. So starting three weeks out, I always take a triple around RP eight to nine on all three lifts. So squat, bench, and deadlift. And then two weeks out, I take a double around RP eight to nine. And then a week out, I take about a single at RP eight to nine. There's one little catch with the deadlift, which we'll get to later, but that's generally what I do on my top sets. And then I also have some back down sets, which we'll talk about as well. So for squats, three weeks out, last prep, going into my October meet, I hit 573 pounds for a triple around RP9. This was a pretty hard set for me, and it doesn't really matter to me if I hit about an RP8 or 9, as long as I'm not hitting complete failure, and it's around that range is kind of what I aim for. Truthfully, the semantics there won't matter too much. So pretty good set here, and this was a huge PR for me at the time, but this prep, I hit 584 pounds for a triple around RP8. So it's actually a little bit easier, and I actually used a lot less hype this go around. So squat is definitely on the come up, but you can see here three weeks out, we're hitting about a triple, and then two weeks out of last prep, I hit 595 pounds for a double at RP9. And this was pretty hard at this point. So I was feeling the fatigue, and I had to hype up a lot for this set, but this prep, even on a really low sleep night, I remember I had some stomach issues the night before, I hit 606 pounds for a double at RP8, and I was amazed that this moved so well, given the fact that my stomach was messed up the whole night and I had been sleeping like crap, and I really didn't even have to hype that much for it, so definitely some progress being made here on squats. And then finally, a week out, both of this meat prep or this gym test prep, and last meat, I hit the same weight of 617 pounds, but last meat prep was about RP9, this time is about RP8. You can actually see last meat prep um, going into the October meet I did in 2020, uh, my back kind of folded on that single and I had to use so much hype to get that up. I was actually a little worried, I kind of screwed up my peak because it was even close to an RP9 and a half. This prep, I didn't even really have to think about it. I just kind of did the set. Everyone was like, that was really easy, you should go up. But I called it there because I don't want to go anywhere near failure a week out from a meet. Now, personally, before we move on to bench, I just wanna say I prefer more of a momentum gaining peak. So I like a lot of rep PRs and just touching a heavy single right at the end before my test day. I'm a lot stronger, more an advanced athlete. So some people who are newer, they may wanna peak with a lot more singles. You know, practice kind of heavy singles and just doing one competition specific rep. For me, myself, I instead focus on rep PRs and a lot of exertion and just kind of pushing it from week to week going into the meet because I don't care to do a bunch of singles, especially sub max ones since you kind of have to keep a, your foot off the pedal a little bit or you would be forced to use a static RP across the weeks. Now deadlifts are kind of the same, but it's all done a week early. So deadlifts, I actually hit my heaviest single a week out and then the week before the meet, I just hit like a really easy single that's like kind of second to last warm up territory where it's just like something I'm doing for recovery work. So last prep, I hit 695 pounds around a single at RP eight or nine, two weeks out. And this move kind of crappy to be honest. This was not like my best deadlift prep. This prep though, I hit 716 pounds for a single at RP8. It was really easy, really explosive. And this is actually what I pulled at my last meet. So it's kind of crazy how easy it moved. And this is giving me a lot of hope for the coming um, test day here in, in a couple days. 
Now a week out in both the scenarios of last prep in October and then this current prep, I hit 595 pounds for my last what I call primer single. This is just kind of priming my CNS and movement pattern, keeping me trained, but allowing me to recover on this day. So deadlifts, I shut down. I do a single here around RP three to four. Kind of what I write on the paper is opener, to, or excuse me, a uh, second to last warm up territory. So second to last warm up before your opener at a meet is kind of what I'm aiming here for. So if I was going to open up somewhere at the high 600s or whatever, I'm probably going to take 595 as my second to last warm up. Now bench press, I do the same thing as my squat, although a little bit more volume is involved. And we'll talk about the back down sets and volume here in a little bit. But on bench, three weeks out, I hit the same thing, a triple round RP8 to nine. Last prep, I hit 380 pounds. It was actually overshot. I barely got the third rep up. You'll see I was like heading straight to the rack on the third rep. They look really easy the first two, but my bench is really, really explosive and, and elusive on RPE. This was around RP nine and a half, maybe even close to a 10 for me. And then this prep, three weeks out, I hit 386 pounds really easy. What you'll notice is the reps are actually more controlled. They're not really explosive, but you can see that last rep was no problem for me. That was a clean RP8 and a half maybe a nine at the most so a lot more controlled than last prep and a little bit more weight so bench is definitely making some progress here now unfortunately i incurred a pec strain a couple weeks out on this prep so i don't have a lot of footage of my bench but basically i go to a double two weeks out and then i do a single and last prep my last single is 396 pounds which i also overshot i was overshooting bench a lot last prep it was about RP nine and a half, uh, even close to a 10. And I even thought my spotter at the time had touched the bar or something because it felt so off. The whole thing was just kind of a shit show. This prep, uh, I was actually able to hit 396 pounds for a single really easy, probably about RP nine, even with the pec strain. So I was able to rehab it in about a week and a half and I was able to throw up a good single still. Now, had I been healthy, I think I would hit 407 or more. My bench is feeling, it has been feeling so crazy strong, but unfortunately the strain happened which happens a lot of the times when it's cold weather and I'm starting to peak. So it's not really uncommon, but still pretty happy given the circumstance. I was able to move 396 easier, but I don't unfortunately have that one on film. Now, besides hitting these top sets and kind of how I go about the intensity and exertion going into a meet, we also got to talk about volume. And I want to keep this really simple. I'll do another video more in depth sometime. But basically, three weeks out, everything's the same. Nothing's different. All my back down sets are the same as I was doing in training. Nothing's different. But at two weeks out, I take a 25% set volume reduction. So if I'm accumulating, let's say nine sets or so on squats per week, I'm gonna shave off about two to three sets uh, on two weeks out. And then a week out, I basically don't do any back down sets. So from one week out mark on that Saturday, I hit that last single, and then I don't do any back down sets. And then during the week, I basically just have really easy squat volume. It's like a three by three at RP, five to six on Monday. And then on Wednesday, which is my very last workout, I hit a three or two by one at like RP four to five, like really, really easy. From Thursday on, I do not do anything. So I take a lot of time off going into my meets and I take a lot of time for recovery. If you're a female or a smaller individual down in the 83 kilo class or 82 and a half kilo class, depending on what federation you compete in or whatever, you're probably only going to, you're, you're probably going to train pretty normal the last week before a meet, just shaving off some volume, maybe about 30, 40% volume, a little less intensity. That's about it. I'll do another video for that another time because it, you have to get into a ton of semantics here, but put simply the closer you are to either being a female or a smaller lifter or a newer lifter, you're going to do a lot less peaking the stronger you are or the bigger you are longer ranges of motion you're going to do a lot more peaking you're going to take a lot more rest days and that's pretty much how i go about it with my clients kristen's training tomorrow on thursday two days before her meet i'm already done with training today was my last day on wednesday training and it was really really easy i had zero accessory work only had really easy singles on squats and then bench was like a three by three at like RP four to five. So that's pretty much what I do for peaking. 25% volume reduction, two weeks out. And then a week out, I pretty much remove all volume minus just some very comp specific work. And really I would just call it feeler work. I'm basically just feeling the squat and bench on Monday and Wednesday, and I'm literally not doing accessory work. So a lot of people are gonna be surprised by that because these days the cool thing is, is to go into meets overtrained. 
I don't do that. And you'll see on my test day, I'm very, I have not done the test day yet. And I'm very adamant and certain of myself that I'm gonna throw up some really crazy numbers. And so you'll see that the speaking style really works because I'm putting myself on the spot here. And if it goes wrong, well then maybe you can tell me the speaking style doesn't work. But anyway, guys, that's the video. I wanna take you through my last few weeks of training, break down how I go about peaking. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really sorry we're not doing the meet. That kind of fucking blows. And I really get something out of the atmosphere of like a crowd cheering you on. I had so much of that back in October and I was hungry for it again, but there's plenty of meets to do in the future. For now, I'll just use my buddy Joe to scream at me because he's got the best yelling voice at boss and we're gonna have some fun this weekend i can't wait to show you guys the peak video or excuse me the actual test day video and show you guys what i hit i think because we're in the gym i might do some crazy shit because you don't have to be as safe as like when you are on the platform so we're gonna have some fun i'm gonna see you guys there catch you in the next video